Now the Three Martini Lunch with Greg Columbus and Jim Garrity. Welcome to the Three Martini Lunch. I'm Brett Witterbull in for Greg Columbus, joined by Jim Garrity from National Review. Hey, Jim, how are you? Good to be here, Brett. It's good to have you here. I know we've got uh, three uh, absolutely fascinating martinis coming our way. So let's dive right in with the first, the president of the United States uh, up at West Point uh, this morning, this early afternoon, addressing the graduating class at the U.S. Military Academy. A lot of focus on his foreign policy. And not all of it, uh, well, you know, it's good for us. It's all I can say. The Washington Post taking a, a big swing at this president's foreign policy. Why is this such a good one? You could detect it a, a tone of growing irritation and frustration with the uh, Obama administration's foreign policy from the Washington Post editorial board uh, for, quite, for quite a, few, a couple of years now. But I, it seems to be getting more and more intense. I don't know whether you would characterize them as being interventionist or... Uh, hawkish or even necessarily conservative. But I think it's safe to say that they believe that big problems overseas can't really be ignored. You can't wish them away and you have to you know, address them very seriously. Um, here comes uh, the, the, just the opening paragraphs are just devastating. It says, you know, uh, after you know, winning election, he'd reduced the U.S. presence in Iraq to zero. After helping topple Libyan dictator Muammar Gaddafi, he made sure no U.S. forces would remain. He has steadfastly stayed aloof, except rhetorically, from the conflict in Syria. And on Tuesday, he promised to withdraw all U.S. forces from Afghanistan by the end of 2016. And he says the Afghan decision would be understandable had Mr. Obama's previous choices proved out. But what's remarkable is that the results have also been consistent, consistently bad. <laughs> Iraq has slid into something close to civil war, with al-Qaeda taking territory that U.S. Marines once died to liberate. In Syria, al-Qaeda has carved out safe zones that U.S. senior officials warned will be used as staging grounds for attacks against Europe and the United States. Libya is falling apart with Islamist, secularist, military, and other factions battling for control. We hope Afghanistan can avoid that fate. Now, that is about as brutal and all-encompassing a criticism you're going to find from the Obama administration's foreign policy. Um, I don't expect the president to change anything in, in light of this, but I think it's safe to say that um, he would like to believe, oh, no, everything's going fine, you know, like singing like those little Lego figures, everything is awesome. Um, and then anyone with eyes can look around and say, well, actually, no, the world is a dangerous place. It's getting chaotic. And while there are a lot of Americans who are happy to see U.S. troops coming home, you got to wonder what's going to be left uh, in the aftermath in these places. And will we someday find ourselves dealing with a terror threat coming from someplace like Syria or Iraq or Libya uh, or Afghanistan again. And at that point, are we back to square one again? So um, I'm glad to see that Obama's foreign policy is really getting the tough scrutiny that is largely avoided for the past few years. It is about time. And let's hope uh, let's hope the uh, focus continues in that regard. That is indeed a very, very uh, uh, a good martini. I don't like the one that's coming our way, though. This is a bad one I see coming uh, coming over here to the table. And uh, yesterday's uh, had three letters, CIA. Uh, today's bad martinis got just two letters, VA. Well, maybe two more letters. Uh, TX, the VA in Texas, a crime syndicate? What the heck is going on here, Jim? Yeah, that's a headline you, that grabs your attention, even if you— uh already are feeling very uh, pessimistic and frustrated about the VA. So from the Daily Beast, what used to be Newsweek, back when there was a printed Newsweek, um, Jacob Siegel reports that uh, the headline is, Texas VA run like a crime syndicate, whistleblower says. Um, and just, you know, he says, new, you know, the story says, new whistleblower testimony and internal documents implicate an award-winning VA hospital in Texas with widespread wrongdoing and what appears to be systemic fraud. Um, and so it's just, you know, they manipulated hospital wait lists. Uh, they wanted to cover up the weeks and months veterans spent waiting for needed care. Um, but here's what's, here's what's really just that, that little extra bit of, of lemon juice in the, in the paper cut. Uh, mm -hmm. If those lag times had been revealed, it would have threatened the executive's bonus pay. Ultimately, this gets down to greed. And so oh. um, just, just a, a really abominable situation gets even worse. The whistleblower tells the Daily Beast, for lack of a better term, you've got an organized crime syndicate. People up on top are suddenly afraid they may actually be prosecuted, and they're pressuring the little guys down below to cover it all up. Um, remember, our president said last week he didn't know if it was systemic. 
I think it's safe to say this is well beyond a few bad apples or random isolated incidents. There is something deep and dark and wrong at the heart of the VA and the way it is managed these days. Right. And uh, each day we get some new story that kind of indicates it's even worse than our lowest expectations. Well, as we speak, I'm on hold with the Justice Department, uh, hearing things like crime syndicate and fraud like this. I'm thinking RICO investigation. Mm -hmm. Eric Holder to the front, please. Can you? Can yeah, you yeah, he'll get right on that, Brett. I don't worry. <laughs> When he's done with Fast and Furious. Yeah, and course, he's done with Fast and Furious and the State yeah. Department and all these uh, other things. Right, right. Well, this is this is horrible. Obviously, uh, uh, we, our, our men and women who serve this country and serve it so honorably, deserve only the best health care. And the idea that this could be driven by something as craven as greed is truly not just a bad martini. This is an awful martini. And let's be honest. Ranks among our all-time worst, so, sure, uh, you know. It sure does. Well, we're going to go ahead. Over Greg when he gets back. I had one of the worst bad martinis of all time. That's right. I'm going to um, take uh, the martini, dump it, and then smash the glass and bury it in an undisclosed location in the it's Meadowlands. So earth after that, yes. You know. So. All right, well, coming up here, we've got a very weird martini. Uh, Carol Costello, a, a news anchor of, I don't know, of some regard at CNN, <laughs> third place ranked, fourth place ranked CNN, uh, coming out with an odd assessment about the school lunch program, uh, the, 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 the argument that's going on in the Congress right now about rolling back the regulations. And Carol Costello seems to think, am I reading this right, that Michelle Obama signed a law? What's going on here, Jim? Yeah, now here's the thing. You're speaking extemporaneously. We all make mistakes. We all have uh, uh, moments where we say things not quite the way we would like. But the CNN anchor um, then kind of basically just said Michelle Obama signed a bill into law about covering school lunches. And um, that's not the case. <laughs> that's, you know, the, the, the first lady is a ceremonial one. We can argue about uh, uh, whether, you know, whether she has great influence over her husband and things like this, but it's really kind of a, a biz, you know, bizarre wording there. Uh, some of us with long memories may remember Bill Clinton running for president in 1992 and saying two for the price of one and things like that. Um, you know, somewhere Eleanor Roosevelt is proud. So for everyone who's ever suspected the first lady is the true power behind the throne and actually calling the shots over there. Uh, this CNN, this slip of the tongue by the CNN reporter would appear to be supporting evidence of that. Um, perhaps, ultimately, they should, you know, go back and double check. And, uh, you know, perhaps all the money for the school lunches came out of teaching civics since apparently we've forgotten. Well, no we, lady mentioned in the Constitution. So. We know that given the administration, they do have a very broad and interpretive view of the Constitution. Maybe it's in the penumbra someplace that you've got the first. It's emanating penumbra. Yes, yes. You know, it's, it's kind of like a paisley. It kind of it floats out and curves a little bit. And at the very end of it, it gives the uh, first lady authority to sign. Here's the once we've had bills signed into law by auto pen. Uh, sure. Maybe we could just at that point, anybody can just start signing whatever they want. And, you know, that's absolutely right. Well, you know, as Paul Begallo once said, law, a stroke of the pen, law of the land. Right there. Yeah, we exactly. No, doesn't say anybody who has to hold that pen. So, oh, so. oh my gosh. Well, listen, uh, Jim Garrity, certainly uh, uh, an interesting, a fascinating group of martinis, uh, starting with The Washington Post taking a huge whack at the Obama foreign policy and its massive failures overseas uh, where foreign policy would, of course, take place. Uh, we certainly have a very bad and awful, a terrible martini in the the Veterans Administration in Texas and their hospitals being run as a criminal syndicate by a whistleblower, at least that's the claim. And then finally, poor Carol Costello at CNN referring to the law Michelle Obama once signed into effect governing school lunches. Well, I look forward to tomorrow's three martini lunch. I think it's going to be uh, insightful and entertaining as always, Jim Garrity. What do you say? I think so too, Brett. I look forward to it tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. That's Jim Garrity from National Review. I'm Brett Waterbull in for Greg Corumbus. It's the three martini lunch. We'll talk to you tomorrow.